This is my first attempt at an assemblage, and it came about in a couple of ways. Number one, Makers Creative Collab, the people that participate decided it would be nice to heart bomb the founders or creators, PM Artist Studio. Secondly, my husband came into the house with some of these old sanding discs that I felt like I had to find a use for. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mix Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel if you like short, concise, to the point videos. I like to show you what I'm going to do, do it, and then show you what I've done. There are also a few other places along the web you can find me. I'm working on my website, trying to get my blog up and running. I have a Facebook group and Instagram I'm not so good at, but I am trying. I started with this heart-shaped, inexpensive paper box from the Dollar Tree here in the U.S. I think, I think my husband paid a dollar for it. I had him pick him up. I coated it with black gesso inside and out. Here is that sanding disc that he was getting ready to throw in the trash. It's one that is worn out that he's no longer using. So I retrieved it from the trash bin, and I am coating it with black gesso. I will be using that on the front of my box. And I also allowed the outside of that box to dry and went back and painted the inside as well, being very careful to get all of the edges. I do not want any of that pink showing through anywhere. So now that we have a 100% black box, I want to add some texture. This is a layer of cheesecloth, and I am just adhering it by painting gesso over the top of it. So I haven't gone into any gluing or anything in that fashion. It is simply laid over the top, and I'm painting over that gesso, over it with gesso. And I'm allowing it to drape over onto the side. And I'm just going to hit it a bit with a heat gun to dry it a bit faster. And now you can see how the sanding or the sanding disc will look on top of this box. Testing out that lid for a little bit of height, but I do settle on a couple of uh, round circular wood pieces to create that. I want to add some more texture. I have some tea bags here that I am gluing on. This random sizes, little piece of burlap. And the whole point here is just to get some texture added to the piece. I have a remnant of Kozo art paper that I just glued there on the side in the corner. And I just want to continue to find and add texture. There's a couple of little remnants of cheesecloth. And I'm putting these down with some glue and water mixture or handmade Mod Podge. I've also adding here a little piece of ribbon or lace ribbon. And now that I have all of that texture in place, I coated it with a coat of black gesso. And there are the two little round discs that I told you about before. I've taken a bangle, just a, it was a, out of my old discarded jewelry, a straw bamboo-ish type bangle, wrapped some string around it. And now I am just coating that with some black gesso as well, and I've glued it onto that disc. Putting the two wood pieces down, gluing those onto the top of the box, and then I will place the disc on top of those. And that gives me a little bit of height so I can tuck things under the disc. 
And you can see I don't completely have that bangle painted up. It's still kind of showing some of the bleed through. Um, and I'm just testing out other pieces. This is an old bottle cap. I pulled that key in. I decided not to use the key. But that bottle cap, I think I will glue right there. And secure that into place. So now we kind of have the foundational piece. And I'm just going to test out what I would like to put and tuck underneath it. I have some old keys, some wood numbers that I found. I'm just stacking those little remnants that I've gathered up around my studio. This is an old discarded shell casing. So just anything and everything. I also have some flowers, little fabric flowers that I found. So I'm going to start to glue these things into place by tucking them underneath that sanding disc. Now, in retrospect, I think I would have painted all of these with the black gesso before I put them into place because it did become a little bit cumbersome to go back and paint them. I also want to point out here that I'm utilizing pistachio shells. So these were just shells that I stuck in a container and uh, washed off really well and um, brought over to the studio. I figured they'd come in handy sometime. And now is the perfect time to pull those out and glue a few of them into place around the edge of this assemblage. So I'm starting to get it where I'm, I'm happy with it. And it's all just a matter of choice, a matter of what you have laying around, what you want to, to tuck underneath. I've not really made any concrete plans for anything. I just traveled around my studio to find things that I wasn't using for other projects that might work tucked in here. I also have some of those little metal gears that I have a ton of. Um, some buttons. So there's there's lots of little things that I found that I thought would be appropriate here. I even tucked a paper clip underneath. Anything to add dimension and texture. So now that we have everything glued into place, I'm going to let that glue set up. And then I'm going to come back in with the black gesso and get everything coated in that coat of black. And as I said before, in retrospect, I think I would have painted all of my little pieces before I added them on. And I'm wondering, too, if for like these little flowers and delicate fabric things, if coating it with some spray paint might have been easier and created a better finish. Now this butterfly was a simple piece of purchased ephemera that I covered in black gesso front and back. And now to rust it up a bit. I have all of these texture pieces from Finnabar, and I'm going to start with the rusty color and just coat it around the outside edges, hit the pieces of texture that are in there, and kind of do my best to highlight that texture in this piece.
And I did weaken that texture paste with um, some water and used a paintbrush just to get a little bit more on. The um, rusty red um, kind of dried up a little bit on me in, in the jar, but the green is still very fluid. So I'm going to come back after the red or the rusty red with the green. And I'll link everything that I used. So you'll be able to, to see what it actually is. And I just squirted the entire piece with a little bit of water to kind of get some movement in those highlights so I can kind of push them around a bit. And this is, was just a experiment, experiment, experiment. Okay, and now I'm going to cut the back side of that little butterfly. And I think that butterfly will look nice sitting up there, but I do need to distress it a bit, so I'm going to come back to it with some of those distressing colors. I'm going to start with this um, gold bronzy color. Get that on there. I'm going to come back and wipe it off. I'm just getting kind of a foundation and looking for placement. Let me dry it up a bit. And this sand a bit of it off. And I'm wearing the gloves when I work with this texture paste because I, the last time I used it, I didn't, and I like to work with my hands more than I do the brush, and I found that that texture paste on my fingers um, really dried out my skin. I'm coming back with the black gesso to cover up some of the texture paste. I'm going to hit it with the texture paste again just to build up the firmness of the butterfly so it's not so flimsy. And I'll coat it again with the black gesso. And now I'm just highlighting it with the green. And you can see some of the bleed through of the the bronze coming through. Hitting the back again with the black gesso. Now just touch up on the piece and I'm just dry brushing, dabbing back in some black where I felt like I got a little too carried away with the texture paste, just to make sure we have some interest and dimension added here. And now I've glued my little butterfly into place, and I just used my glitter glue to glue him into place. And I'm pretty happy with the way he looks. So now to kind of work on the foundation or the bottom of this, I'm adding just texture to the base. And I had these embossed toilet paper tubes that I had left over from another project. So I'm just going to tear it apart and glue it along the edges. or along the outside of the box. Just wherever it will fit. Have some sandpaper that is pretty worn out. So I'm going to take some of that. And glue that to the outside as well.
just here and there. And that wasn't sticking real well, so I'm just gonna going to put that down with a clip to hold it in place to allow the glue to dry so we do not have anything that pulls up. And once everything is firmly in place, I shall go back over the top of it with the black gesso. There is the top, nice and dry and finished. And I am going to collage into the bottom of this piece. And I did a complete gel press session. And the papers that I created there is what I'm going to use to place in the base of this heart shape box. I thought about cutting this paper out in the heart shape to fit in the box, and I decided it would look a bit more interesting if I just pieced it in. And I am not doing a great job of tearing, so I do have some white edges. So I will come back with my paintbrush with a little dry gesso on it and you know, kind of randomly go over it to cover up those little white pieces that we have showing in between. And now just to hit the outside of the box in the same manner we did with the top, that rusty paste first. And now the patina green, mint green texture paste. A little black gesso to hit any little areas where the pink might be showing through and to dry brush. Like I said before, where any of those little white lines were showing on the inside of the collaged paper. And now I am going to cut a heart for the bottom of the box. And this is just another piece of, I think this was one of my foundation pieces that I didn't wind up using, but I like the color. So I shall cut my heart out and adhere it to the bottom of the box, going around the outside edge of it with a Sharpie just to get any remnant of paper. And I'll come back in with a little messy line on the inside. And just around the outside edges with that black gesso. And there is our finished box. And I wrote a little note on the back to Patricia and Mariah, or just a little reminder that it was a 
gift from two old crows. And I think we shall call this complete. So here it is, the finished piece. I am filling it with candy and shipping it out to PM Artist Studio as a thank you for all of the work that they put into coordinating and putting together our monthly collaborations. So thank you, Patricia and Mariah. I'll put a link to PM Artist Studio down in my description so you can check them out as well. But once again, this is Peg, Two Old Crows. Thank you for being here. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. And I appreciate the comments. I appreciate all of you that have already subscribed and are supporting my channel. Bye for now.